Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mining Your Moz. I still get a lot of questions about what happens to batteries when you put them in series or when you put them in parallel. Even from pretty experienced uh, vapors and flashlight users and drone flyers, uh, all different types of uh, battery users. So I thought I'd go over a little bit about what happens when you put uh, batteries in series and in parallel. And this applies to any type of battery and any voltage or any size, really. The, the same principles or excuse me, the principles are the same no matter what type of battery it is. Now, I'll cover this later in the video. For a regulated device, it doesn't matter whether they're in series or in parallel, and I'll explain that. But this right here, which is going to go through the basics, this is going to be for unregulated or mechanical devices. A flashlight without a regulator board, a mechanical vaping device, something hooked up directly to a motor, maybe just the battery and the load, no intermediate or in between electronics that regulate the voltage or regulate the current, that'll be covered when we go into regulate it. But just in the back of the mind now, just remember that for a regulated device, the current per battery doesn't matter if they're in series or in parallel, and I'll show you why. So two batteries in series or more. The three things that are involved uh, with any, put them in parallel series of voltage, the current rating for all the batteries together versus the batteries individually, and the capacity or the milliampere hour rating of what essentially has become a battery pack if you put a bunch of them in series or a bunch in parallel. Now, for series connected batteries, where we have one connected to the other, there's only one wire and one path, the voltage adds up to about two, let's say 4.2 volt lithium ion batteries, ideally, before you turn on the power, That'll give you 8.4 volts. So the voltage adds up when they're in series. The current rating stays the same though. Current rating for these two in series or three in series or four in series doesn't matter. It's the same as an individual battery because each battery has to handle the full current. No matter what is flowing here, whether it's a coil and a vaping device, a bulb for a flashlight, a motor and a drone or whatever, the full amount of current flows through each battery. So each battery, retains its original rating. If you have two 4.2 volt 20 amp batteries, let's say this is rated 20 amps, this one is rated 20 amps, and the 2500 milliampere hours each, the battery pack will be an 8.4 volt 20 amp battery pack because each one is still handling 20 amps. If 20 amps flows through here, 20 amps flows through here, flows through here. So the total rating is still 20 amps and it's still 2500 milliampere hours because both batteries are draining at the same time at 20 amps, that's the same thing as each individual battery being used at 20 amps. So you still only get 2,500 milliamp per hour capacity. This is the same for more cells. Now the way to think of this in analogy is used water tanks. It applies or it holds up under most examination, but again, this isn't a perfect analogy, it's this one I'm gonna use. Think of two water tanks. I've got a water tank up here, filled with water, or it's got some water in it, single pipe down to here, and a single pipe coming out with the water. The pressure of this water is pressing, and pressing down against this tank and pushing out. That can be thought of as voltage. You've got more pressure on it, so the voltage adds up from the two tanks versus one tank on its own won't have that extra pressure. That'd be voltage. Now, the capacity is the same. Excuse me, the um, current rating is not doubled because we only have one pipe. No matter what we've got in here, no matter what these batteries can do, we only have one pipe's worth of water that can come out. We can't put more water through that pipe because it's only a certain size. So the current rating is gonna stay the same form. Now capacity is also gonna stay the same. And this is where the analogy doesn't work as well, but think of it as both tanks are draining at the same time at the same rate. So you're not gonna get double the capacity over the original tank. Again. Don't look really, really closely at this because it doesn't hold up. But basically, you can just say more pressure of the water because you have two tanks stacked up. That doubles the voltage. Just one pipe worth of water coming out. So the current rating stays the same. Now, if you go into parallel, you've got the two positive ends connected together and the two negative ends connected together. Essentially, it just becomes a bigger battery, a fatter battery. You're still at 4.2 volts. The voltage stays the same but the current rating goes up. And that's because each battery can supply current individually to come back out and then it divides back up to the batteries. And we can think of this as two separate water tanks. 
there's no extra pressure of a second water tank pressing down on it, so the voltage is the same for each, quote, quote unquote, the water pressure, but we've got two pipes now that are feeding out water, so we can get out twice as much current, twice as much water from these two tanks in parallel. So if we have, and that also goes for the capacity, excuse me, since each tank now can contribute its contents to the total, the total capacity also goes up. So if we have two 4.2 volt, 20 amp, 2500 milliamp per hour cells, same as we did over here, that equals 4.2 volt, because the voltage stays the same, 40 amp, theoretically, we'll talk about this, 5000 milliamp per hour, because the current rating goes up, doubles, capacity goes up, doubles, if you have two in series, if you have, excuse me, parallel, if you have three in parallel, it triples, four in parallel, quadruples. Now, and that we will call a battery pack. Anything more than one cell connected together would be a battery pack. Now this is theoretical for this 40 amp rating. That's because, yes, you have two 20 amp batteries in parallel, but they're not gonna share current perfectly equally. If you draw 40 amps out of this battery pack, it might split 22 amps and 18 amps, something like that. Or even worse, it could be 10 amps and 30 amps for each battery. It all depends on how uh, consistent the wiring is in the device, the battery contacts, how well the contacts are making connection, the condition of the battery, and the, and the batteries themselves. Every single battery is a little bit different. The crappier the wiring, the bigger the difference in the condition of the batteries, the more unequal the sharing is. So you need to derate the battery pack. If theoretically, if you take two 20 amp cells and you put them in parallel, 30, excuse me, 40 amps is the theoretical rating. But since one might be pushing more than the other, you want to take it down to maybe 35 amps, even 30 amps if you want to be very con uh, conservative. It all depends on the condition of your device and the batteries themselves. There are no numbers I can quote for you. It's really you judging the condition of things. If you think everything is beautifully wired in perfect condition, eh, call a 35 amp battery pack. If you're not quite so sure, eh, maybe bring it down to 30 total. That way if one battery is pushing a lot more than the other, you're still not going way above its 20 amp rating. Now, there's also para series where you've got two sets of batteries, two sets of batteries in parallel that are then put in series. And this essentially gives you the best of both worlds. Everything adds up. Now, it better because you're carrying four batteries where you used to carry two or even one. Um, the voltage goes up because you have batteries in series. The current rating goes up because you've got two in parallel with two in parallel. And the capacity goes up because you've got them in parallel. So four 20 amp, 2500 milliamp per hour cells, theoretically, becomes a 40 amp, 5000 milliamp per hour, 8.4 volt battery pack. Everything goes up. The voltage, the current rating, and the capacity. Now you want to take that 40 amp and derate it because the wiring may be crap. The cells could be a little different. Bring it down to 35, 30 amps, whatever you want uh, to address any imbalances that happen, depending on how bad the wiring is. So, so it's, it's actually really basic, really simple kind of things. These Just these things that add up. Just to recap for series, the voltage adds up 4.2, 4.2, 8.4. Current rating stays the same because it's just one wire. Capacity stays the same because it's just that one wire. Both of them are feeding at the same time. For parallel, voltage stays the same because they're not end-to-end, -end. it's still 4.2 volts. Current rating goes up because each of them can contribute now. You've got, quote, two pipes that the water, the current can come out of. And the capacity goes up because they can both be feeding and you've got twice as many electrons or twice as much water that can come out. For power series, they all go up. Voltage goes up, current goes up, and the capacity goes up. Now this is all for unregulated or mechanical devices. For regulated devices, and I'm sorry I have to bring the second one back in here, but second board. Let's see if I can not have this fall. Okay. I'd said earlier that it doesn't matter if they're in series or parallel, and here's why. We go back to where we were before. Two 4.2 volt cells in series, we get 8.4 volts. Let's say you've got a 100 watt device or a device that's regulating power to 100 watts. It might be regulated to a particular voltage or something. We'll pick 100 watts. Now, 
basic you know, current times voltage gives you power. So if we move the variables around, 100 watts divided by 8.4 volts, 11.9 amps. Now, that's through this one wire since it's in series. So it's 11.9 amps going up here, 11.9 amps going out the top. Each battery has to supply 11.9 amps. Remember that. If we go into parallel, two 4.2 volt batteries, well, if we have 100 watts, 100 watts divided by 4.2 volts, remember voltage does not go up in parallel, it stays the same, 23.8 amps. That's total to the coil in a vaping device, to a motor, to a bulb in a flashlight, 23.8 amps is flowing through here. But the batteries share the current. Each one, ideally, contributes half the current. Well, 23.8 amps divided by two, that's 11.9 amps per battery. That's the same as what we have up here. Now the reason it is the same is because here we get 100 watts through 8.4 volts. So you know the voltage goes up so we don't have to draw as much current to make 100 watts. Well if we go into parallel the voltage comes down so we draw a lot more current to make the 100 watts. So there's 23.8 amps here, 11.9 amps here, but we can share the current through here. So each one still ends up, even though we have a lot more current flowing here because of the lower voltage to make 100 watts, it's still 11.9 amps per battery. So in a regulated device, you never have to worry about series versus parallel, something like that. The way you determine how much current is flowing through each battery and whether you have a high enough, rated, a high enough current rated battery is to look at the power level per battery. If you've got 100 watts and two batteries, that's 50 watts per battery. If you have 100 watts with two batteries, it's still 50 watts per battery in parallel or in series. And that's another way to realize, oh, yeah, if each battery has to supply 50 watts and each battery is 4.2 volts, oh, that's 11.9 amps. Okay, that's another way you can look at it too to make it simpler. And that's all you have to remember. For a regulated device, just go by the wattage per battery. For an unregulated mechanical device, just those simple rules I had for voltage, current rating, and capacity. And you're done. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.